talk to you about another innovative program that you focused on with Capital Idea and Project Quest. Uh, this is not only about just securing any job that is there, but as you mentioned, a career pathway so that a person has hopes of not only getting a job, but getting a job that will help them support their family at a livable wage. And as I understand the program, again, it is not just about how you become a uh, radiology technician or uh, someone who works in semiconductors, uh, but it's about uh, getting some counseling to go along with that training to be sure that you're able to fulfill all the responsibilities. Can you elaborate a little on how those programs work? Yes, sorry. Um, the capital idea model provides the occupational training, uh, the connection with the associate degree program or a community college program that builds that occupational skill. But they also work on building the, the soft skills that are important in the workplace and, and make someone an, a successful employee. And so through weekly uh, sessions with a career coach, participants go through and talk about issues like time management, uh, communication and interpersonal relationship skills, and work on building uh, kind of some self-confidence that they can take into the workplace and make sure they're going to be a valuable employee. And how might those programs interface with TANF? Is there the potential to assist more uh, TANF recipients, the uh, small percentage that there are overall, but to help them uh, achieve some of the same success uh, that Capital Idea and Project Quest are already achieving? Certainly. Uh, actually, both of those programs, as well as the Career Advance Program in Tulsa, serve TANF recipients already. They're part of that low-income and disadvantaged group that uh, these programs are expi explicitly trying to move forward in the, in the workplace. Are there other recommendations that you have that we should consider as we are renewing and reauthorizing the TANF program uh, to assure that more economically disadvantaged people actually move into living wage jobs? Yes, I think reconsidering the work requirements to allow individuals to engage in that longer term intensive skill development that has been shown to lead to higher paying careers that actually move people out of poverty would be an important change to consider. The, the emphasis on work first uh, with a very short term emphasis on job achieving skills hasn't been shown to be effective in the same way that building an occupational credential that employers value has.